Hello guys, I'm Johnny and today we are going to create our first static pages with CodeIgniter 4. At the end of this tutorial you will be able to create a website with static URLs as you can also see at your screen. As always, before diving into some code, let's explain a little bit what MVC is and how it is used in CodeIgniter 4 to create web pages. MVC stands for Model View Controller and it is a well-known pattern that is easy to understand if you have already used it before. However, if you are like me, a graph like this confuses you more and that's why I will explain it to you with a simple example. Let's forget a little bit about CodeIgniter and let's say that we would like to use simple PHP in order to show a block web page. What we usually do is something like this. First, we are creating a PHP file, in our case block.php. At the beginning of the code, we are writing a logic that if we have an ID on our URL, we will show only one blog post or else we will show all of them. For example, if we simply open block.php, it will show us all the posts, although if I have an ID with a get parameter, as you can also see at your screen, we will only get one. Our next step is to do some calls to the database so we can get some data. My logic here is that if you have an empty ID, then I'm using the function getPosts, although if I'm having an ID, I'm using the function getPost with an ID as a required field. Great, so now we have our data and we would like to also present it with a nice way to the user. I'm copying the HTML here and having a for each statement to show all the posts or to show only one post with a full description. Now next step, wait, I'm actually done. So wait a second, why do I need a whole framework to do this simple thing? I'm glad you asked. See, we've just started writing some code and it's already a complete mess. We have all the business logic and the presentation into one single file. And by the way, it is really hard to extend it. Don't worry for that, CodeIgniter and MVC pattern is here for the rescue. From the previous example, if we wanted to separate the code into different MVC sections, this is how it would look like. First, we would have the controller, where you control the request that you have. From the previous example, this is the code that would be your controller. Basically, is where you control the request that you are getting from the user. Second, we have our model, where you get the business logic of your web page. In the previous example, this code right here would be our model. It is very common that you see database queries on models. And finally, the view that is our presentation of our web page. In the previous example, view was the HTML presentation that you see at your screen. It is very likely that when we talk about the view on websites, we usually mean the HTML files. Now let's see our previous graph of MVC and let's try to make more sense of it. The problem with this graph is that when we talk about MVC in CodeIgniter specifically, the graph can be simplified into a linear presentation. If, for example, I would like to visualize it better in my head, I would prefer the progress bar animation that you can also see at your screen. First, we always have the router that is basically translating the request of the user into something that makes more sense for the controller. For example, when the user calls CodeIgniter with the URL mywebsite.com slash, then this will go to the controller web pages at the function home. If the user will point to slash FAQs, then this request will be delivered from the controller web pages and the function FAQs. I hope you get my point so far. Second stop in our trip is our controller that will handle the request. Then we are asking our model to give us some data. And after that, the view will present us some HTML data. And at the end, if you have a nice looking design, the user will see a wonderful web page as a final output. If you are still missing the point, don't worry as we are about to see some code with CodeIgniter and I hope it will be easier for you to understand. Let's go back to CodeIgniter and let's move the previous logic into CodeIgniter 4 so we can understand exactly how MVC works and how CodeIgniter is using it. At the end of this chapter, you will be able to have the following out. When you point to the URL slash block slash view all, you will see a message that we show all the blog posts. When we point to the URL slash block slash view slash the ID, we will show you a message that we show only one blog post. So first we need to make sure that we are getting the correct message from CodeIgniter when we have the URL for view all. More specifically, we are expecting this URL to throw us a 404 error page. 
if you are not seeing this error, then there is an issue with your Apache configuration, but this is not related with this tutorial. So for those users for now, use the index.php slash at the beginning of your URL. For example, in our case, index.php slash block slash view all. If you are interested in how to remove the index.php from the URL, now it is a good time to also subscribe to my channel, as this will probably be in an upcoming video. Having the 404 message? Great, let's continue now. Next step is to open the folder app and go to the folder config, open the file router.php and add the line that you can also see at your screen. This line simply means that when I am navigating to block slash view all, point me to the controller block and the function view all. Let's go and create our controller block. I'm navigating to the folder app and then controllers and copying the default controller that it's home. I'm renaming home.php to block.php and now open the file block.php, remove all the functions of the controller and add a function with name view all. At the view all function we are just showing a message that we will show all of our posts. Now if you go back to our browser and refresh the previous page, you should be able to see the message that you can also see here. We would like now to have a new web page to show only one blog post. Go back to your roots.php and add the following line. For now just copy paste really what you can see at your screen and we will explain in a bit what this line is doing. Navigate to your controller blog and add the function with name view and also at the function view add an idea as a parameter. Add an echo message that will look like the message that you can see at your screen and navigate to block slash view slash 1234. If you see the message with the ID, then that means that you did a good job so far. Let's go back to the roots and explain what we did here. Rooting in Code Igniter is having a special syntax that is easier for you to understand than having a regular expression. There are special rules that are doing some magic with some extra validation. For example, in our case, it is validating that the ID is a number. So if the user will add something else as a parameter, it will show you a 404 page. In my opinion, I think it is self-explanatory. Basically, this parenthesis is the dollar and the number by the order that the parenthesis showed up. I will explain you what I mean. Let's say that on the left side of the root, we have this string. And on the right side, we have this. So the first parenthesis is the dollar one. The second one is the dollar two and the third one is the dollar three. If you would like to know more about the roots, I will have the link at the description below so you can see the official documentation of CodeIgniter 4. Now let's see some CodeIgniter magic that I know for sure confuses way too many people. Let's remove the roots that I've just added. You will notice that the examples are still working. Let me explain what just happened here. You see, CodeIgniter Framework is having a default way to show a page by guessing the controller, the function name and the variables from the URL. That's why I love MVC. It is simple and it just works. On the other hand, you will need to be extra careful to not have any security breach. For example, in the previous example in Roots, I'm checking that the ID will need to be numeric. You can see that if I add a non-numeric value, then it is not validating the input. This is because the roots are searching if the root exists. If it doesn't, then it is trying to guess the controller and the function. In our case, it finds that there is a controller blog and there is a function view. At the function, we have a parameter and hence rendering it. If you would like to avoid those security issues and don't have code igniter to guess, then you should change the default configuration of set auto root into false. And in that case, you will not let CodeIgniter to guess. In my opinion, if this is the first time that you are getting familiar with MVC, set the configuration set auto root to true till you get used to it and try slowly slowly to learn the roots. You can use both at the beginning and once you are a roots expert, then you can set the configuration set auto root into false. And of course, don't forget to validate your inputs at the function just to make sure that you are at the safe side. If you made it so far, that's great, as we are going to explain the model and the view. But before doing that, please make sure that you've hit this like button, as it is supporting my channel a lot. Thank you very much, let's continue now. Model is most commonly used to call some data from the database. Let's not waste more time on theory though, and let's create our first model. Navigate to the folder app, and then to the folder models, and create a new file with the name blockmodel.php, as you can also see at your screen. Now open the file and copy the code that I've just copied from the official documentation. Rename the user model into block model. There are several ways to get our data from our models. For this tutorial, I'm using the simplest one. 
Easily enough, we can add our table and primary field as protected fields with the names that you can also see at your screen. Table and primary key are fields with specific names, so Code Igniter will be able to auto-generate some database queries in the database, as you will see in a bit. Congrats, we've just created our first model. Let's go back to our controller and let's call our model. At this line, I'm calling the model as per Code Igniter documentation. But if you have a smart IDE, like PHP Storm or Eclipse, then it can auto-complete it for you just by typing new block model as you can also see here. Now let's get our post data. In order to do that, type dollar block model and then call the function find all. This will return all of my data for the table posts. In fact, the function find all is transforming my request to select asterisk from posts automatically. In case you are getting the error that you can set your screen or something similar, then that means that you've configured your database with the wrong credentials. In order to change that, go to .n file and add the correct ones as you can also see at your screen. Now if we print our data, you can see that we have all the data that we need for our blog posts. Let's go to the function view and do the same. Here we will do something similar. I'm calling the function of the model find and as you can see my editor is auto-completing it and this function call will be translated into the MySQL query that you can see at your screen. We are printing our data and see that everything is there. Great, we are almost done here. Let's add one more if statement that will protect us in case we get the wrong input from the user. More specifically, checking if the row is not empty or else we will show a 404 page with the lines that you can see at your screen. That's it really, we are done with our model as we have all the data we need. Of course, our model can be much more complicated than that. But for this tutorial, just get the first idea that in most cases we are getting some data from the database. Thankfully, Code Igniter is making it easier for you. If you need a special tutorial just for the model, we can have a separate video for that. Just let me know in the comments below. Now the last part is the view and it is also my favorite part. My favorite part because you can see the full picture with your own eyes. Let's go back to our controller and see how we can load a static view first and then we will connect our model with our view. I am copying the full HTML code of my template and I'm going to the app folder, then views and then creating a view with name blog.php. Now paste the HTML code that you have for the full page of the blog and we are going back to our controller to show this view. This is simple enough. You can do that by using the function view and then the name of the view file. In our case, our view is blog.php. We can skip the .php, so we can add just the name blog. Let's go back to the previous URL for blog and refresh the page. As you can also see, you can see a nicely looking HTML page. Although keep in mind that I haven't done anything special just yet. We've just printed the static HTML that we have at the file. It is time now to connect our model with our view and see how everything is coupled together nicely. In our case to get the dynamic post data and show them to our template. So first, let's input our model data into our view. This is the second parameter of the view function. However, keep in mind that we will also need to add a name to this input, so it will be transformed. For example, we can have an array with name post that will have the post data, as you can also see here. Next step is to get this data at the view file and use them. Have in mind that anything that is in the array of the data, like the posts that we have, it is transformed to code igniter view as a variable. So in our case, we will have the dollar posts as a variable to use. Let's see what I mean. Here, magically, we have the dollar posts available. Let's have a for each statement for our posts and let's print some data. Now go back to our page and refresh it. You will notice that these data are the dynamic ones coming now from the database. By the way, I will have the code at the left here and the browser at the right as I'm doing changes all the time and I don't want to confuse you. Lastly, let's also connect our one blog post with our model. Let's go to blog slash view slash one and see that our previous link is working. Great, the link is working, but we will need to have a better looking design for our web page. We are copying the HTML that we have for one blog post so we can have our dynamic data here. Let's do the same thing that we did before. I am returning a view with name blog post and add as a second parameter the array post with the data of the post. Now let's open the view file blogpost.php and add the dynamic data of the model. Great, 
Now let's refresh our page and we can see that everything is working as expected. I hope you understand now how MVC works for CodeIgniter and let's do some tidying up and finish our blog so we can have a complete website as I've promised at the very beginning. Let's first fix some details that we did skip on purpose to the previous sections. Let's organize our views a little bit. As you can also see, we have two views that we are copying basically the most parts. In order to avoid that, it is good to create view sections. For example, here we can have one section that can be the header, one section that can be the footer and add them as separate files. Create a new folder sections and add the files header.php and footer.php. Now just copy the header and the footer of the previous view. Let's go back to blog.php and blogpost.php and include those files. See how minimal our code now is? So now, just because I've added include here, is this the best way that we can do for our views on CodeIgniter? Honestly, no. This is just a workaround for now, just to not copy paste the same content. In the future, you should create layouts, but this is a story for, yes, you've guessed it, for another tutorial. Let's now create the other static pages. Let's go first and create the about page copying the HTML and creating the view. Let's create our contact page with the same way, copying the HTML and creating the view. Now let's create a new controller with name web pages that will just have the static web pages, naming the functions with the names of the views and also checking that all the URLs are working as expected. Our last piece is to create our root and have minimal URLs. Let's start from the root that I would like to point to the blog page. Then we have the about page that I just want to be at slash about. Same thing for the contact page. And lastly, let's make the view page a bit more simple by removing the view from the URL. More specifically, when we have a slash blog, we are going to open all blog posts. And when we have blog slash ID, we will show only one. Lastly, disabling auto routing to false and also changing some URLs with fast forward, as you can also see at your screen. You can now see a completed block with all the URLs that are working as expected. I'm sorry for the noise. That's it, guys. I hope you did enjoy the video. If I missed anything or you would like a separate video for a specific section, please do let me know in the comments below. You've asked for a bigger tutorial with a complete block, and there you have it. So your feedback is really helpful. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.